Hey guys, thanks for tuning back into Mad Dog Fishing. Tonight we're going to talk about the terminal tackle for fall redfish. What I use and some of the setups that I use when I'm targeting big reds or just redfish in general. Uh, some of this can cross over into pompano fishing because uh, a lot of times I'll catch redfish while pompano fishing. Sometimes I catch pompano while redfishing. Uh, just determines on what kind of baits you have out there and what kind of rigs and setups you have. But right now we're, we're getting into the fall. The temperatures are finally starting to cool down here in Gulf Shores, Alabama and along the, uh, the Gulf Coast. Uh, and that really turns on the surf fishing right now. Before we get into winter, fish are gorging, they're filling up, they're fattening up right before uh, they start heading deeper water offshore. So today we're gonna to talk about two setups and I will show you a demonstration of what it looks like and how to set them up. Uh, the first one is pretty simple. A uh, friend of mine, Salty, uh, with Salty's Pompano Rigs, he supplies me with custom rigs for Pompano fishing and for red fishing. Now I've got some setups here. Here's one right here. You can see that. Now he, he custom builds these for me. Uh, I asked him, I said, look, I'm targeting redfish. I need something a little a little heavier uh, leader material. I need something bright that'll pop in the stained water. So I go with the chartreuse. And I have one hanging up here. I should have, should have done all this before I uh, started oh, the camera, right? camera. So this is what that rig looks like. Uh, when you're in the surf, uh, you have a, a two dropper set up. Now, I use these for pompano fishing, but I also use them for redfish. And when I use this type setup, I'm usually fishing with fish bites and with sand fleas or just fish bites alone. And what th these floats really are, they're an attractant. Uh, I said, I told Salty, I said, look, man, I need something that'll stand out in some, uh, some really dirty stained water uh, for, the, for the surf. You know, when you get in the fall, you have a lot of storms coming through. The surf stays dirty a lot. So I wanted something that would really pop, really get the redfish's attention. And so I told them chartreuse and uh, red. And so those are the two colors I use when the water's really stained. Uh, but he builds all kinds of custom rigs. I will leave a link in the description to his Facebook page. You can message him, direct message him if you want some custom built for a specific need or just want to order some in general. If you're in Gulf Shores, you can go by Hooked Up Bait and Tackle. They keep them in stock. If they're not sold out, they sell really quick down here uh, because they work and they're a premium. Uh, he doesn't use cheap material on here and I absolutely love them. Last year, I couldn't even tell you how many fish I caught on his rigs. Never had one fail ever. Now that we've covered the dropper rig, uh, we're gonna talk about another setup that I use and it's called a fish finder rig. Very similar to a Carolina rig. If you're a bass fisherman, you know what a Carolina rig is. The only difference is instead of putting, say, an egg sinker or a bullet weight directly to your main line, you put a barrel clip swivel. And I'll dig one of those out in a minute. We'll zoom y'all in so that you can see it. But I have a surf rod set up right here. It's one of my shorter ones, kind of easy to maneuver here in the shop. And I'll show you what it looks like on the rod and then we'll go over the different materials and why I choose uh, certain things over other ones as you can see well you're not going to actually be able to see uh, let's see here we're going this bell tripped here let's yeah, see if we move this around here without uh Tearing something up. All right, this is a fish finder rig. You have a, a standard I, on this one. I have a standard J hook. I think this is the owner. Uh, three out hook, followed by a 12 inch leader. I don't usually use anything over 12 inches because it gets really tangled in a rough surf. Followed by a barrel swivel, and we'll talk about the different size barrel swivels. A bead, a bead just to protect your knot and to keep this barrel clip swivel from sliding over the, the, the original barrel swivel or damaging the knot. So that's really all that bead's doing is protecting your knot where it attaches to the barrel swivel. 
Uh, the reason for this, and we'll talk about this here in just a minute because I'm pretty sure you cannot see this, is so that we can adjust the weight as needed on the surf. If I get out there and it's a calm day, I can get by with, uh, let's just say, a two ounce uh, pyramid weight, you know, one of these small ones. I can get by one of these when the, the, the surf is calm up to maybe a one foot with, with slow rip current. And you just basically just clip it on and you're ready to go. And as the fish takes it, they can run it without feeling the resistance of the weight. Uh, if the surf gets heavy, waves pick up, rip current strong, you can go all the way up. I don't go any higher than six ounces. If it requires more than six ounces, I go to the house. Uh, I love fishing a rough surf, but sometimes it's just time to call it and go to the house. And as you can see, just easy, just clip, unclip, to change the weight. That's one of the advantages of a fish finder rig. One of the things I absolutely love about it is when you're traveling from your car to the surf or from the surf to the car, you have your, your rods either carrying them by hand or in a, a beach cart. You can take the weights off, you can hook your line. Uh, never put your hook over your ceramic guide, but you can put it uh, through the frame of one of your guides. Not the, not the ceramic part, but as you can see, just right here to the side. Don't ever put it through the ceramic. It can damage that, which then will turn around and damage your line. And But you can take the weights off and you can travel. You don't have that weight banging around, damaging your rods, coming undone, tangling up with other rods as you're bumping and bouncing along, pulling the cart. All right, let's get this rod out of the way. We're going to... This over here, out of the way. And guys, I will say before I get into this, I, we have to do a disclaimer. I am associated with Amazon, so anything in my links, I do make a little bit of money off of it. All that money goes back into the channel. We don't keep any, I mean, it's not much, it's, it's pennies, really. Uh, but any money we make through Amazon, we invest back into the channel. It doesn't cost you any more money. Uh, they don't charge you for using the links in my description. Just when you click on them or you buy through my link, we do make a percentage or a, you know, a small percentage. Even if you just click on the link to investigate, it helps us out. So they say I have to tell you all that. Well, I just told you, there you go. Am I getting rich through Amazon? Heck no. I mean, the most I think I've made well, I hadn't made very much, so. But when we do make money, I buy microphones, we have lights, we have tripods. We're always investing in our YouTube channel. And we've been doing this for two years and it's been, you're constantly updating your equipment, whether it's your vlogging cages or lights or microphones or tripods. Something's always breaking, something's always needing replacing. So it, it costs a lot for a lot of these guys to get out here on YouTube especially these kayakers that have four or five camera views going at one time. And golly, man, uh, each of these cameras is $300 a piece. So uh, a lot of these guys got a lot of money tied up in these cameras. And I appreciate them because I love watching a lot of these guys uh, do extreme kayak fishing. I like doing it myself. Uh, next year, we're going to do set up our kayak more for filming. We do do kayak fishing. We're just not really good at, at filming yet. So working on that this winter. So I'll be looking for that in the upcoming spring of next year. Now, let me bring y'all in. We're going to uh, get this all set up. I'm going to show you each little thing. <coughs> the different style hooks, the dis different style barrel swivels and why I choose uh, certain size barrel swivels or certain size hooks uh, versus others. So let's get you moved and, and get back to it. All right, guys, let me just show you real quick some of the stuff I'm using. You've got, uh, for leader material, I like the 50-pound, uh, uh, just a regular monofilament leader material. It's a little stiffer, a little more abrasion resistant. You can get by 
with just regular monofilament. This is 30 pound test. Uh, we use this a lot as well. Uh, but if you want to, you don't have to. Just buy the leader material, just a little more abrasion resistant and it holds up a little bit longer than the monofilament, as you can see. So where it just sits abrasion resistant, whatever. But now as far as hooks, my hooks are dependent on the size bait I use. Uh, sorry about the shadow guys, I'm out here in my shop, so we're working with the light that we can. Now these are 10 off Gamagatsu hooks. These are for really extreme conditions. As you can see, I haven't even opened this bank. I don't ever go this big of a hook. Uh, you can get by, this is a, this is a uh, six off octopus uh, J hook. Super sharp, super strong, never have one break. And of course you have three different styles of circle hooks. And guys, you can get by with these small circle hooks. Uh, I normally go with this size right here when I'm using the uh, cut bait. It just helps, especially when you're using body chunks, it's great. Uh, and the hook, you don't have to set the hook to fish, you just start reeling the fish will hook itself almost every time in the corner of the mouth. Now with the J hooks, you do have to set the hook. Now I've yet to gut hook a redfish. I use these for big chunks of uh, mullet, mullet head, uh, they, they prefer mullet head over body chunks for some reason. You can catch them on both, but they, for some reason they prefer the head. So, and then the barrel swivels we talked about earlier. Uh, we have three different types. Uh, the, the biggest one is just a standard cheap barrel swivel. Uh, corrodes real easy, even salt water, but you can get by with it. The, the next one over in the middle here, that is designed for salt water. It's a very strong uh, and corrosion resistant type barrel swivel. And then the smallest one you see here on the end, which is one of my favorites, it's a low profile. Uh, forget the name of it. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up, put a link in the description. But it's a low profile, and believe it or not, that little bit of swivel is stronger than those other two. So size does matter. Now, when you're using the smaller uh, barrel swivels, you just have to be careful uh, and not reel it up into your tip-top guides, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And of course, you need some sort of bead uh, to protect your knot from these barrel clip swivels. Now, I got two different types out here. It doesn't matter what style you go with. Uh, they're, they're basically just to hold your pyramid weights. So, let me get y'all back set up and we will uh, put one together. All right, guys, let's put this, uh, put one of these uh, together. And what we were going to do, we'll start off with, we'll use this, uh, fluorescent line for our main line uh, which is supposedly is coming off the reel so what we'll start with that we'll slide the uh, the clip barrel swivel onto our main line if I can see here so we as you can see we have have that slid onto the line and then we follow it up by a bead color doesn't matter the bead is to protect your knot from uh, the, the, the weight hitting back and forth. And we're going to go with the bigger swivel uh, for demonstration purposes. Uh, I use all three. I'm not picky. Uh, I haven't had one break yet, but I do like the low profile ones. And as far as a knot, I use a uni knot almost exclusively on everything. I have, I've only had it fail once, but I've had other knots fail as well, so uh, uni knot is just an easy go-to knot for me, and there are tons of videos on the internet on how to tie a uni knot, we just moist that line, pull it together, uh, we clip off that tag in. Now, this is just our main line set up so far. So we have our clip barrel swivel, our bead to protect our knot, and then just a standard 
regular barrel swivel. Now from there we're going to attach our leader material. In this case this is the Grand Slam by High Seas. Uh, I like it, it works. Same thing, uni knot. And I just make five wraps with the uni knot. Two, three, four, and five. Just make sure you uh, moisten your your line so that because when you pull it tight, it creates friction. Pull that tag in tight. Clip your tag. And then I pull off about, I wanted about 12, so I pull off about 14 or 15 inches. Give me some room to work with. Uh, I'd rather work with a shorter leader than a longer one in the surf. And then you just attach a hook. Uh, you can use a uni knot here. You can use a fisherman's knot. Uh, uh, and then we have the, uh, gosh, I forget what this knot's called. You just make a loop in your line. You stick it through the eyelet. You just do an overhand knot, like so. And then the loop that you made from the overhand knot, you just run back th the hook through, and then you just snug the whole thing up. Uh, that's the easiest way to work with this when you start getting up in the big line. I'll think about this knot's name. I'll even put the title of it in the video because I can't think of it right now. Uh, all right, knot. Well, that just did not work out, guys. Oh, that sucks. All right, let's do it again. I'm not I got to talking, wasn't paying attention. So, double your line up, stick it through the eye of the hook. Overhand knot, snug it tight, put your hook back through your loop and then pull all that tight like so very simple and just clip off your tag we use this knot a lot when I was bass fishing a lot of saltwater fishermen use it and there you go guys you got your fish finder rig uh, you got your uh, clip swivel your bead your barrel swivel followed by 12 inch later down to hook of your choice that's all it is guys very simple uh, it's very easy to do. Let me turn this light off. Uh, it's, it's very easy to tie, uh, when, when you're on the go, uh, it doesn't take a lot of skill to, to tie these knots. So I use it a lot and guys, these rigs work. I use these fish finder rigs a lot, guys. I mean, if I had just one rig to choose, that's what I would choose down here. I do love the dropper rig. That's all I use, pompano fishing. And like I said, I do use it some red fishing. And uh, there are times the dropper rig will outfish the, the, the fish finder. So I put usually two with the dropper rig, a couple out with a fish finder. I let the fish tell me what they want. Guys, thanks for watching. If you got any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, guys. It means a lot to me and Christian. It helps out the channel and uh, really motivates us to get out and make more videos. We're getting ready to do a road trip. I'm really excited about that. It'll be the first time we've taken the camera on the road to do to film. So really geared up, excited to do that, and uh, can't wait to, to share that adventure with y'all. Guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you on the water.